there always has been and there always will be a mistrust of police from certain segments of every community. Police officers got to think deeper. They got to be community minded. They have to want more than I'm going to go out and save the world as Superman, the police officer. One of my goals was to shrink the area, get everybody to know each other. You know who lives next door to you. I think crime is less likely to occur that way. The email basically read, it's called the Rock House Program. Police officer is going to live in a high crime area, be the face of your community. People are going to know where you live and have your phone number. In terms of engaging the community and being responsive to community concerns, community policing is among the best tools police departments have to respond to the political crisis. When you see there is that mistrust, you need to attack it head on. The ROC program is a critical piece of community policing. We just turned into my area, just so you know. Um, that street back there, Auburn Street, that's my southern border, but I go Auburn Street up to Glenwood. This is Rockton that we're on. I go from Rockton over to Huffman. So this is my area. <laughs> She's just a brat. She's a good dog. She's a brat. Come here. Why didn't you want to go pee over there, huh? You go on the sidewalk, but you don't want to go in the bathroom that I dug out for you. The Rock House program, it's a resident officer program, if you will, for the city of Rockford. The crux of the program is an officer living in a neighborhood, being a neighbor, being a friend, being an average person, and building relationships with the community. I talked to my daughter about it, and she wasn't interested at first because we were downsizing big time. She actually got tears in her eyes and said, you're taking steps backwards in life, hon. <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of officers didn't want any part of it. Some people have families, and they kind of just want to get away from police stuff when they go home. I feel like me being young and single, and I like the kind of community-oriented policing anyway, so it just kind of just made sense. Starting in the early 1980s, community policing began to spread in a serious way to American cities and began to become adopted very widely. In the 90s, the Clinton administration started giving police departments money uh, to hire police officers. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we are going to help New York City hire and deploy 1,600 more community police officers. Many police departments got millions of dollars to hire community officers. Then comes the great fiscal crisis that struck the country in 2007, 2008. Police departments begin to cut back. Over the past few weeks, many Americans have felt anxiety about their finances and their future. Important aspects of their community policing programs were one of the victims of the cutback. And you saw this in city after city. Now cities have begun to come back, and they're looking again to find ways to reinvigorate the city's community policing program. I think the lesson here is that budgets matter, money counts, but police chiefs and politicians know that this is what the public expects. In important ways, it's also a response to the legitimacy crisis, where it was helpful to mobilize people around crime in the 80s and 90s. Now it's trying to reestablish the connection between police and the public. But police officers, in my experience, like to maintain some anonymity, some distance from the places where they work. In particular, police officers who sometimes have to make hard decisions about what they're going to do and how they're going to have to deal with people. I've been born and raised here. So a lot of times I do have to arrest people that I know people who love them, who care about them. You know, sometimes I'll be like, damn, man, why you, why you make me do that? The old days of cuff them and stuff them, if you will, it, it didn't work. We just put more people in prison for a lot of offenses that prison wasn't going to solve. We still have to go to calls. We still have to go to violent crimes. We still have to deal with law enforcement. The other 60, 70, 80% of your time, how can I solve problems or mitigate problems so they don't become problems? We're not always successful, but there's different ways to attack the problem. 
The thing about community policing is that it focuses on problems, not crime. How you guys doing? Hey. Yako. The effective programs find ways of mobilizing city resources to address a, a really wide range of problems. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Turner. I You're like welcome. it. And this is a tremendous change in what police see themselves as responsible for. The reason I keep a, a lot of toys and blankets, hats, gloves, it's just, I mean, just better community interaction. Oftentimes when people have a run-in with the police, it's not good. So I just want to just change that and show them that we want to be their friends. We don't want to just be somebody that's coming there when someone calls 911 and takes somebody to jail. Being a Rock House officer is non-traditional policing um, for today's police. But when you think back, people probably lived right next door to the sheriff or right next door to their officer. So this is probably really what traditional policing was supposed to be. We just somehow moved away from it. You can't really determine we stopped the crime from occurring or we stopped a gang member from moving into a neighborhood because of the officers there. But an easy way to, to gauge the success of the program, go knock on their neighbor's doors. It's hard to measure happiness, but you can measure when people tell you, I absolutely love the fact that the police live here. That's a good measurement. The end goal is to make that community, that particular neighborhood, self-sustaining and have a trust with the police, uh, not just that officer, but the police in general. Police work is people work. It's as people oriented as being a school teacher. And police officers who think that they have the support of the community in which they work, they're much more willing to grant them some respect they're much more willing to explain to them the reasons why they're taking the actions that they are. So the police sense of solidarity with the police in which they work is important. When I listen to my parents, my grandparents talk, and they talk about how they could name every person in every house all the way down the block for several blocks, you know? But now if you ask the average person who lives two houses away from you, they have no clue. Having an officer living right there in your neighborhood you know, you see that they're just a regular person. Of course you should live where you patrol. You know, you will have a greater sense of empathy if you do. Because not only are you working there, but hey, those are your neighbors. Thanks for watching. We'll be releasing more exciting videos of people working to reform the criminal justice system. Subscribe to Freethink to be the first to see them.